Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virgil here. Welcome to my channel. Today, an art journal tutorial using the negative painting technique. So I'm starting off by putting a coat of gesso on this 9 by 12 Canson Mixed Media Art Journal page. I, it comes in a coil book, but I've taken it off the coil so I can work on them flat. At the end, I'll assemble the book back together. Once I give this a good coat of gesso, I'm going to make sure that it dries. So today I'm going to use this napkin. And there is the full one. I've peeled off the two layers. And actually, because I was going to use this napkin at another time and then ended up not, I already had them water cut out. I'm absolutely loving the color combination that's in this napkin. And I'm using multiple parts of this napkin and just arranging it on the page. Now, one of my concerns when I'm setting this up is this napkin, while I love the colors, is fairly small in scale. Now, I was setting this up to kind of have use it as a focal image. But as you see, the page had other plans and I ended up using it where I took the color scheme from the napkin. And I'm using the napkin more as a background collage item. Which is a good way of using napkins that do have smaller scale images on them. The larger scale ones make good focal images. The good thing is also I have another one of these napkins and I'm going to attempt to use it or to somehow set it up as a focal image because I really do love the colors of this. And you know I love flowers. So what I'm doing here is I'm gluing this down with fluid matte medium. I'm putting a generous supply underneath and then brushing on top. There are, I am getting a few wrinkles, but I'm not too worried because the one of the nice things for napkins in art journaling is that you get a lot of texture as well. If you're unsure about what colors go well together, looking at what the designers of napkins do is a good way to learn. And then you can use those same colors, whether you use the napkin or not. So there's all this scroll work in the background. So I grabbed some scroll stencils and stamps. And here I am taking some thick gesso and rubbing it through this endless scrolls stencil. I'm going over top of some of the napkin because I want to meld that. I don't want that harsh edge. Putting thick gesso as opposed to modeling paste gives more subtle texture, but it's definitely there and it adds a lot to the page. And it's one of my favorite techniques. Going with that scrollish work, I grabbed this heart stamp. This is just from a dollar store set that I'd gotten. But I'm trying to use some of my smaller stamps. So I'm just using it to add some line work, some scrolls in the background. Now that I've got texture and pattern and color in the background, I'm going to fill in some of those white areas. And I'm, again, looking at the napkin. Gray is in the background. So I'm using some gray with white gesso to tone it down a little bit and just spreading it throughout, colorizing the areas that are not colored yet. And I'm going over the edges because, again, I don't want that harsh edge. I don't want you to really see where the napkin ends and the page begins. 
and spreading gesso and paint over it is one way to achieve that. I'm using a baby wipe to wipe back if it gets too opaque where I can't see the patterning. I always have a hard time when I'm using gray. It isn't my go-to or my natural process. Here I'm rubbing in some of the purple because I want this to be an all over kind of pattern. So we have the purple from the flowers of the napkin, but then I'm adding some more in. And here's where my plan to have the, the flowers from the napkin as focal images started to fall apart because now I'm getting all over pattern. Now I'm rubbing a little bit of green. This is hooker's green. The purple that I'm using is gray purple or purple gray. It's a Liquitex Basics and it's a new color, but it's a muted, beautiful purple. I'm just in love, love, love with it. This now looks like vintage wallpaper. And I could have, at this point, put a sentiment on it and called it done. But I grabbed the Endless Scrolls stencil. Nope, I think that's a different stencil. I'll have to check and put that in the description box. And I'm putting the purple on there. I'm putting pattern and interest into the background. Now, here's definitely where I've gone completely away from my original plan of using the napkins as a focal image. I have the center of this stencil that I'm just using, just the center part of it, that motif, to add some white on the background. The background's getting a little cloudy, a little dark, and I want it to brighten it. So I'm using that. So look at your stencils and use a part of it to give you whatever. Get the most use out of those stencils. Now I grab this Tim Holtz stamp set. I think it's Mixpedia 2 set. There's four different patterns. And I'm using black. I'm using black because I want to add that contrast in. And I want some patterning. I figure now that I've made the decision to get this, make this an all over pattern, I'm just going to play it up. I'm not stuck to using the floral of the napkin. My dot stamp, I'm putting purple paint on it. With a makeup sponge and stamping on. When you use acrylic paint with your stamps, you get the pattern, but you also get some texture. Now I decided that I'm going to use the negative painting technique and I'm going to do hearts. I grabbed those heart stamps. I guess it's, you know, it's February, right? So I played around and cut some heart shapes. And once I was happy with the setup, I am tracing it with my white Stabilo all pencil. And I'm using that because it is water soluble and I'll be able to wipe off it afterwards. that Choose Love sign stencil from the Crafters Workshop, I'm going to use it for my sentiment. So that's why I had it on top. So with the negative painting technique, what you're going to paint out is the negative space and you're going to make the hearts suddenly pop off the page. So everything that isn't a heart is going to get painted off. Now I, I was just going to do some shading here. 
but I changed my mind. There was a lot of changing my plan in this art journal page. And some art journal pages are like that. They evolve. And like I did, you just need to go with the flow. Here I'm mixing the paint with some a little bit of white gesso, although I did find that I really liked it pretty much straight out. Can't see where I had traced, so I'm just putting those templates back on. And I'm just painting that out. The paint that I use, this purple paint, especially when I added gesso, became very opaque. So while the texture still shows from the modeling paste, from the stamping, from the from the napkin, a lot of the pattern disappeared. Now you could have done negative painting. I could have put white in the background, and that would have given a completely different look. But typically I like using negative painting with color, not white. I struggle with the white. You can see how the hearts just popped. They've also become brighter now that I've added a lot of that purple color. When I'm used painting out, I find to get around an edge using angle brushes work really, really well. I decided that I wanted some script stamp, a little bit more detail in the hearts. So I'm just adding some script stamp. It would have been easier to do beforehand, but if you're careful, you can do it now. So a lot of the feel of that original napkin has been recreated. That was my inspiration. And you can still see it in some of the hearts. Now I'm getting rid of the Stabilo All Pencil because I'm going to shade with black here and I don't want it to get lightened with the white of the Stabilo All Pencil. So I'm shading using the floating acrylic technique on the inside of the hearts and then I do on the outside of the hearts. And my hope is that by doing the shading, it is going to make the heart look 3D and look like it's coming off the page. And again, I'm using the angle brush, which this is like the half inch angle brush. And that's what I typically always use when I'm using the floating acrylic shading technique. I will put a link to the video where I do a tutorial on that technique in case you want to learn more about it. It's a great video. And um, it's a great technique, I mean. And you can see, hopefully you can see how that shading is making those hearts stand out from the background. And the more I add, the better it looks. It does take a while to do all the shading that you need. Not even all of it is on this footage. You put a little bit and then let it dry and then build it up as you go. While I'm doing this, I'm thinking that the background is looking a little bit flat. So I grabbed the script stamp that I used to stamp black on where the hearts are, and I'm putting white acrylic paint on it and stamping on the background. 
This unifies because we have the same pattern on both parts of the page. And the, at using the white brightens the page a little bit. I think it may have been because the day that I was doing this, it was very cloudy and rainy and uh, dark. That I thought my page was dark. So the next day I thought, oh no, this is nice and bright. So this is the Choose Love sign stencil from the Crafters Workshop. And I'm using TCW modeling paste. I'm applying it with a key card or old gift card and putting it through. I've taped it down and I've taped off portions that I don't want to be using, the word choose. So again, you can use part of a stencil. You don't have to use it exactly as they have it. I still want to add a little bit of brightness to this, so I grab my fine line applicator bottle and I am just going to put some doodling lines. And I'm not trying to be exact because there's no way especially since there's a lot of texture on that page. And I go over it a couple times and I'm trying to stay fairly loose with the doodling lines. If I go off a little bit or I wobble a little bit, when you put multiple lines, that kind of hides it. And I'm turning the page because I don't want to put my hand into the wet paint. You can use the Sakura White Bold, I think it's number 10, gel pen to do the line work if you wish, or a Posca pen. I just love my fine line applicators. Now I grabbed a woodless charcoal pencil and I'm shading around the outside. This is giving some more black, frames the page. Now this is not permanent, unlike the shading that I did with the float acrylic technique, but I don't want to use the shading acrylic technique anymore. I want it to go a little bit faster. So I'm using the woodless charcoal pencil. And as I showed you, you can sharpen this with a regular sharpener and bring it to a point. So I'm adding more shading. I want to bring this out just a little bit more. I didn't think I had quite enough, especially once I added those white lines. So I'm adding. And sometimes that's what you have to do in that finishing stage. Tweak it. Step back, look at it, and see. And using charcoal pencils is a quick way to shade. But you do have to remember that they are not permanent. So if you put anything wet on top of it, it's going to move. Here I'm taking a baby wipe and actually using the fact that it's not permanent. And I'm getting rid of some areas where it may have been, I got a little bit of the the dust of the charcoal is spread a little bit too much and I wanted to brighten it up. Now I'm coming back with the fine line applicator and just adding some more sketchy lines. These are brighter and whiter, especially since I added more shading and they're standing out. So who said Valentine's Day has to be red hearts? Sometimes you can use purple. Now I'm taking off the tape that I, to keep the gunk out of the coils, and I'm using that fine line bottle and I'm doing a dash line all the way around the outside edge. This ties everything together. I think it adds a nice element. I could have done the dash work around the hearts instead of the scribbling. So there are alternatives. Each is going to give a slightly different look. No right or wrong, just different.
So let's recap. Here's the finished page. And this one, while it wasn't what I thought I was going to do, I do, as it says, I love it in the end. So we start it by using the napkin to set the color tone and add to the background interest and texture. We did some stamping or stenciling with thick gesso. You can't really see it because I didn't bring it out, but it is there and you can see it in real life. I did a whole lot of stenciling and stamping with the same colors that were in there and black and white to build in contrast. I use the negative painting technique to develop the focal images, the hearts. I added the sentiment by putting modeling paste through the stencil. I shaded around the focal images using the floating acrylic technique. And I edged the page with charcoal. Then I got out the fine line applicator and did some doodling around the hearts, sketchy doodling. Then I shaded and I did some more doodling. Thank you so much for joining me. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Now go get creative.